I don't think that's a cop behind me, but you never know. I always tell myself, if it's not a cop, it could be an undercover cop. <laughs> that's what I used to think when I, when I like started doing drugs because I was so paranoid. My friend Brittany is the most paranoid person in the world. All the time. But yeah. Don't be mean to police officers, though. That's another thing that, that black people can't seem to figure out. Uh, don't be <laughs> ugly to them. Because if you're ugly to them, then, then that... It's, it's their jurisdiction. They can fucking do whatever they want. They have a badge. They have a gun. They have a taser. They have a baton. You shouldn't be mean to them. <laughs> okay, that wasn't a cop. That was a sneaky ass car. You know those cars that have like something on the top of it that it kind of looks like it could be a cop car? I fucking hate those motherfuckers. Ooh, a cement truck! He has no idea how lucky he is driving that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Be nice to cops, even though they work for the government. Be nice to the IRS, even though they work for the government. Be nice to the military, even though they work for the government. You know. Like, I'm not a fake person at all. And I, th I think that that's another reason, like, why people like me. Because I, I'm... I mean, some people don't like... I've noticed that all the people that don't like that are fake and flaky and... A lot of other words that we're not going to say, okay, because we have self-control. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm very genuine. I'm very sincere. What you see is what you get. You know, like, I don't say things that you're supposed to say to people, you know. Like when somebody dies, I don't say I'm sorry that that person died because I'm not sorry that they died. Like they, you know, death is a part of life. But I, I usually say stuff that's sort of like unconventional that people have never heard before that makes them think, you know, and I, I think that, that for people that get offended by that, it's people that don't want to think. Um, but I'm pretty good at like gauging that with people. I can tell like whether a person is like a total sheep. Everybody's a sheep a little bit. I mean, they live in America, so we really have no choice. But um, it's like there's there's like a certain level of sheepdom, you know. Like there's this dude that I'm like pretty good friends with that, that works here. Little black dude. Um, we talk conspiracies all the time. And uh, I, I've noticed that like at a certain point of the day, every single day that we work together, we always start bitching about America. It's usually around like 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that we we just go off on on how horrible this country is for for so many different reasons um it's probably because of this job too it's like right after the rush is over and then we're just like fuck these choices these choices really aren't anything <laughs> to be excited about okay but no i mean we both love and appreciate our jobs, okay? I don't, I don't want people to think that, you know, oh, we just shit on America because 
There ain't nothing good about America. That's not true. It's not true. There's plenty of good here. It's just... You gotta look for it, though. Under the avalanche of shit, you know, you... You, you have to really look for it. And, uh... You know, I appreciate life a lot more than, than hardly anybody that I'm around all the time because all they do is stare at a screen, you know? And that's not how we're supposed to live our lives, you guys. Um, but anyway, I'm not gonna go off on that rant again. But, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this friend of mine. Real woke on all kinds of shit. But, doesn't know that the sporting events are rigged. I don't have the heart to tell him. I just don't. Um, you know, because that's like an escape for a lot of people. They get excited, you know, whenever a, a game comes on. You know, they get excited about it. And I don't want to take that away from them by educating them about Gematria, you know? I don't, I don't want to do that. Because that's fucked up, you know? Because for a lot of people, like, they really don't have much right now. They're grasping at straws. And if that straw that they've got in their hand is fucking Monday Night Football, I don't want to take that away, you know? <laughs> that's a sad-ass straw if you ask me, but it's like, you know... Oh shit, did that same thing again where I don't know how to put on clothes right. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about though, uh, uh, like the conspiracy theorist totem pole, all right? Like we're all the way at the, at the tippy top. There, there ain't no conspiracy theory that I'm not willing to entertain, at least for a little bit, you know? Um, and I'll, I'll look into a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to look into everything. I just believe, yeah, they're, they're lying about everything else. They're probably lying about that too, you know? So, I'll bite. But, um, yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people, though, it's like, once you start talking about something that's important to them, once you start talking about something that they're into, um then all of a sudden, like, they're not a conspiracy theorist anymore, you know? And that's what's annoying about it. Like, I'm not that way. I mean, Tom Hanks used to be one of my favorite actors. So, if that lets you know. Used to be. Used to be. <laughs> I really, really hope that Philip Seymour Hoffman wasn't also, you know, a child molester. I'm, I'm just hoping that that's not what happened. I don't think he was. That's probably why he was... He was murdered. Um, they always say that it's uh, drugs. That's so convenient, isn't it? You know, when somebody that knows the truth about some, you know, then they conveniently have a really, really bad drug problem. You know, that's that works out really well, doesn't it? Um, anyway. I gotta go to work, but it was fun chit-chatting.